All right, we are on page 101 in the Kuzarim. Some of what I'll be sharing today is a review of last time, but it's been a long time during these Chagim and the holidays. And it's a good review, is good for us. Amar HaKuzari. The Kuzari, the king, asked a good question on 88, on page 101. Mi shomea divrechem. On paragraph 88. Yeah. Somebody who hears who hears your voice or hears what you're saying. Ki ha'Elohim diber im hamonechem that Hashem spoke to your people. Vekatav lehem luchot and he wrote for them tablets, vezulanza and all kinds of stories that you tell in the Torah. Hadinimo and makes sense for him. Shiaches alechem daat hagshama that he will conclude. That you believe in what's called Hagshama. Hagshama is from the word Gashmiut. The word Gashmiut is physical. They'll assume that you believe in a physical God. Vegamatem, and also you, and Nashimchem, ki en mitchel le ma'amadot a gluim magdorotere. It says it's also, even though you cannot condemn such a person, because nobody can dispute the fact that you went through these experiences. That Hashem did this, Hashem wrote this, Hashem split the sea, Hashem took you out. We should judge you favorably. That you rejected the philosopher's approach of reaching God through intellect and through intelligence. Rather, you went through your history, then because of your history, you saw God, God spoke to you. That must be that you believe in a physical God, but we're judging you favorably because of it. This is what the Kuzari understands when he reads the Torah and he hears what the rabbi is saying. This is what he picks up from it. So let's understand this question first before we do anything else. The Kuzari, it's, it's a good question that he's asked. I mean, the, the, the truth is that most of our religion in our Torah, it speaks about Hashem that gets angry, Hashem that writes, Hashem took us out with a mighty hand, Hashem so many things that Hashem is doing that you would only be able to do if you could assume that Hashem had a physical body. The Khuzari is obsessed with the idea that Yirat Shamayim, the fear of heaven, is this belief in something that's illogical. So it's illogical, you saw Hashem. I know it doesn't make sense that Hashem is physical, but okay, you're telling me that you saw it, then Yirat Hashem is something that is illogical. There are actually many Jews that believe that faith, emuna, is faith. Faith is something that believing in doesn't make sense. This is a, an illness that we picked up from the Christians. The Christians, they believe in all kinds of things that don't make sense. And so Jews assume that faith, what does faith mean? I have emuna that even though I don't understand, and even though I don't know, and even though I don't uh, comprehend, I have faith, I have emuna that will all be okay. For example, we say, I believe in a complete emuna. The Mashiach will come. And even if he doesn't come today, then he'll come tomorrow. If he doesn't come tomorrow, I believe he's going to come the next day. I believe that Mashiach will always come. And so it seems to be from there that if you translate the word emunah, the 13 principles of faith, so I don't really know Mashiach, I don't really know if he will come, but I believe, I believe that he'll come. That's not correct. Rather, the belief in Mashiach is a knowledge. I know Mashiach will come. I just don't know when he will come. And so I am emunah. I'm telling you that I'm committing to this idea that Mashiach will come. In the Gemara, we have many stories. There's a Gemara Masech and Bechorot, and there was a big bird that once came, and it laid an egg. And the egg cracked. And it drowned 60 cities, and broke 300 cedar wood trees, and so on and so forth. And there are Jews who run around, and they'll say, hey, this story is true, this must be, this must be what we believe in. The Talmud says, the Talmud says it was a bird that laid an egg, and a drowned 60 cities, and there are people who really believe that this is what the rabbis are telling us. And the truth is, the Rambam, really we read last time we learned together, the Rambam says that it's impossible to believe such a thing. Someone who would say that everything the rabbis say, including the story, is true, is making a mockery of the rabbis. In the Rambam's exact language, We should pity them for their stupidity. Because in their own mind, they think that they're respecting the rabbis. How are they respecting the rabbis? 
They believe, they believe the story of the big bird with the egg that drowned 60 cities. So the Rambam, but they're degrading them in the greatest degradation possible. But they don't even understand it. Sometimes I feel there are many Jewish groups that are the same thing. They pretend like they're, they're Orthodox, they're fighting for Jewish causes, and Jewish, but they are so lacking in fundamental Jewish principles and beliefs that essentially they're degrading Jews. They make us look so much worse. It's better if they would be quiet. There's a certain book that was written in Israel. Uh, it doesn't make a difference the topic it was. And uh, it's a ridiculous book. And they asked Rav Lau, what do you think about this book? It's a book in Halakha. And Rav Lau said, it was bad enough before it was created, and now that it was created, it's even worse. There's certain things you just don't say, you don't talk about. But they, these people, they think that they are holding the bag of religiosity, of Judaism. V'chai Hashem Itbar, says the Ramam, I swear the name of Hashem. This group of people, they are destroying the beauty of the Torah. And they, they darken its light. And they put the Torah in the exact opposite place that it's supposed to go. There are many people, unfortunately, are like this. And so for this comes the Chavir, the, the rabbi, Rabbi Yudha and he says, On top of page 102, the Chavir says, Khalila Lael Min Hashekar. God forbid that you would subscribe such a lie to Hashem. Vishyavo Batora Masha Sekhan Marchikoto Vesimehu Shakir. Never does the Torah write something that logic dictates as false. Now this is a huge statement for God to live to make. Never does the Torah write something that your mind would say that it's false. Normally, like I mentioned before, we describe faith and munah as believing in something that goes against my logic. Actually, the first reason that I ever wrote a book on halakha was because people were telling me, no, halakha doesn't have logic. You just do it because that's what it says. What do you mean halakha doesn't have logic? Say it's a gzera, it's a decree. Well, who made the decree? If someone made a decree, that means someone else can get rid of a decree. If someone made a decree, there must be a reason for why they made a decree. And if that decree doesn't apply anymore, so why am I still decreeing this decree? And I realize that people truly believe, based on Christian theology, I don't, Muslim, I don't know where they picked it up from, not in Judaism, that everything you believe in and blindly, you don't ask too many questions, you just do what you're told. And this is the worst, it's not even a form of Odat Hashem. Some of our rabbis would suggest that this is not even considered a service of Hashem. And Hashem wouldn't... I know the Hasidim might argue about this and say, listen, everything that a Jew does, Hashem loves and things. Okay, I'm, I'm not arguing here against uh, people who are greater than me. Just the idea that emunah does not have to go against your sechel, does not have to go against your, your logic. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov was very into this teaching of emunah pshuta. You have to have like a, a simple faith in Hashem. And people really believe, Rabbi Nachman believed that, just believe, just believe in Hashem, just believe in everything. And there's even so far in one of the books of Rabbi Nachman's students, there's a story of these maskilim, these um, reform enlightened Jews, enlightened sarcastically, that had, uh, had come to meet with Rabbi Nachman at Breslov. And Rabbi Nachman the whole time spent convincing them through logical proofs that you must believe in Hashem. And they said, one of the Hasim said, Rabbi, this is so incredible, could you teach us this also? And he got angry, he said, for the maskilim, they need to hear these things. For the heretics, they have to hear. But you, you just believe in Hashem. The problem is that Rabbi Nachman himself, when he defines emunah in his book, his own book, the Kutei Mohoran, Rabbi Nachman says, the emunah begins where your mind ends. And this idea, some would say, means, hey, so whatever your mind can comprehend, that's where you start to believe. It's not true. What Rabbi Nachman is telling you is your emunah, everything is intellectual. And there are certain things which we know, we know, in our mind, with our logic, that are beyond us. Hashem, I can't understand Hashem. I know there's Hashem, that's in my logic. The world dictates to me there's a Hashem. There's a proof in reality there's Hashem. Torah, I don't believe in the Torah. Torah is true. Torah is, anyone with a head who reads the Torah knows it's true. Uh, what about people who read the Torah and they have a head and they don't, they don't believe it's true? It's fine, they don't have a head, or their head is sick, or they need some medication. But... When we say belief in Akash Bul and Munah is beyond the Sechel, there are certain things I don't know how to think like Hashem. That's because I'm a person. So there are certain things I have in Munah. 
that just like I understood this much, there are things that are above me. Rabbi Yudha Levi pushes off an approach of emunah being blind faith with two hands. and says, the Torah will never command us to believe in something that is against logic. So, ask an obvious question. What about all the miracles in the Torah that go against logic? They all go against logic. The split, sea splits. It's not logical. The man falls from heaven. Well, that's not why we believe in Torah. Very good. So you would argue, like the Rambam, that that we don't believe in the Torah because of any of these miracles. We don't believe in Hashem, like the Rambam says in the Hilfotis of the Torah, in the 8th chapter. We don't believe in Hashem because of these miracles. <laughs> right? The Rambam will, will believe such a thing, but Rabbi Huda Levi says something else. Rabbi Huda Levi says that when you say a miracle, a miracle happened, it doesn't go against your logic. It goes against nature. Nature. Nature is not logical. It's not your logic. Nature is a force that exists in the world that Hashem could change. You could change. Man could change. We could all change nature if we truly understood the depths of the, and the secrets of the Torah. So when I see the sea splitting, it's not against logic. If logic believes in Hashem, Hashem can make the sea split, just like He makes it not split. If I believe in Hashem, bread can come from heaven. Just like Hashem can make bread come from the oven, He can make bread come from heaven too. It's not against logic, it's against nature. But going against nature is not something that the Torah denies. The Torah says we can go against nature. And therefore, Rabbi Dada Levi's statement stands true. The next discussion that Rabbi Dada Levi is going to go into is quite long. But let's see, let's try it. Why not? We're back in the Kuzari book. On page 102, in the middle of the paragraph that I left off at. Utchilat aseret advarim, hu ha tzivui shnamin belohim, והשני האזהרה מעבוד אלוהים אחרים ומעשות פסל ותמונה ותבנית וחלו של דבר מהגשים. So the Bible of the my proof, the first of the Ten Commandments is to believe in Hashem. The second pro- prohibits worship of other gods in addition to Hashem. And makes idols and graven images which represent God. The result of the first two then is the prohibition of attributing any physicality to God. So we have the two first of the Ten Commandments. One says, you have to believe in Hashem. And one says... That you can't make false. That you can't make false gods. Uh, what does it specifically say? What kind of false gods? It says, Lo lecha pesen. You cannot make for yourself an a, a, a idol, a statue. V'chol tumunar, any image, asher b'shamayim mimaal, that which is in the heaven above, v'asher ba'aretz mitachat, that which is on the earth below, <coughs> And even in the water underneath the ground. You cannot make a physical God. So says Rabbi Dalai, we learn from two things. One, I have to believe in God. And two, believing in Hashem means not believing in a physical Hashem. So Rabbi Dalai argues, don't tell me that my Torah says that, that I have, it's a physical God just because as he wrote or he took out with his hand or... The Torah itself says that you cannot believe in Hashem who is physical. By the way, I'll mention soon that this is a big fight between the Rambam, Alav Shalom, and Baruch Spinoza, uh, Both of them have a, an argument about this pasuk and what it means, and we'll talk about it in just a minute. But Rabbi Dalai continues, and he says, Ve'ech lo neromamehu mehagshamot How could we not elevate Hashem above the physical? Mehagshamot, sorry. ואנחנו מרוממים קצת מבריאותיו מהגשמות. מהגשמות, אני לא יודע אם זה הפרופר. We elevate even other creatures above the physical. So how would we not make Hashem above physical? כנפש המדברת אשר יהיה אדם באמת, for example, the soul of a person. The soul, the נפש, המדברת is truly what speaks inside of a person. If you think about it, when a person lives and a person dies, what changes? What's the difference in a dead body and five minutes before when it was alive? Oh, uh, the neshama. The neshama. 
What happened? The body is still there. The lips are still there. The eyes are still there. So why is it not talking? There are some scientists, they believe that the body has electricity. And that as soon as they're going to be able to figure out how to not get the electricity to run out, they can make people live forever. I wish them luck. They should be successful in making people live longer. But the, the electricity is not what's going to solve the problem. This electricity is called the neshama. The neshama, it exists inside of us. And when we say bury, when I say devora, when I say, I'm referring to not the body per se. I don't think about your eyes or your nose when I say your name. I think about you. Who are you? Your essence. Your essence is your neshama. Such a bit out of view, when I attribute that there are people who are greater than just the physical body, how could I then make the creator of people to be lower than a physical body? When Moshe spoke, and he led us, and he guided us, and then on the shono, it was not his mouth that spoke to us, it was not his mind or his heart. Those were all tools to what is called Moshe. Who is Moshe? The neshama that is inside of him. And Moshe is a nefesh that speaks, Moshe is a nefesh that speaks, that is conscious. It's not physical, and it cannot be bound or limited into a place. It says, Moshe, it doesn't take up any space, this neshama, nor is it ever filled into capacity by all the things that are in the world. We ascribe all kinds of uh, spiritual qualities to it. How much more so Hashem? If my neshama, which is a piece of Hashem, is elevated above my body, then how much more so, more so Hashem, who is the creator of all the neshama, that He's elevated above everything else? We point out here that Rabbi Yudha brings two points as to why why we don't believe in a physical God. One is obviously because the Torah said so. Even though the Torah says, you know, sometimes we'll write an article or you'll say something, there's a disclaimer. And the disclaimer means, it says, listen, you might understand from what I'm writing, X, but I'm telling you that initially I mean Y. That's what I mean. The Torah says, you have to believe in Hashem, and you cannot believe in any physical God. And therefore, the Torah's disclaimer is, even though you might come to believe that uh, there's physicality to Hashem, the Torah itself rules this out. And the second is physical. The Raman tells us logical. The Raman tells us that logic. Rabbi Lalavi is telling us that it's illogical to believe in a physical God. And therefore, the Torah would never demand from us to believe in a physical God. Hashem wouldn't have a hand. It's illogical to believe that a Hashem has a physical thing like a hand. And therefore, there's a second thing. And that's why Rabbi Dan Levi brings us this whole second paragraph about the soul and about Moshe. And about Our logic also tells us that there cannot be a physical God. And I mentioned to you Baruch Spinoza. Remember Baruch Spinoza? We once read about him. Baruch Spinoza was a... was a philosopher, was a student of Rabbi Yisrael, Min Yisrael, and unfortunately left the right path and became a non-believer in Hashem through logic of the, of the Torah. Baruch Spinoza believed that a man wrote the Torah, so his entire philosophy is, is mistaken in the first place. But he believed that you have to understand from the author. The author said, God has a hand, so you can tell me he doesn't have a hand. But the author of the Torah said that he has a hand. The truth is that Baruch Spinoza later says, no, he doesn't have a hand, because the Torah says later, you cannot believe that God is physical. So the author put it into his text, the disclaimer, saying you cannot believe that it's not physical. The Rambam goes on a whole different level. The Rambam says, no, forget Spinoza, he doesn't even know about Spinoza. But the Rambam suggests that it's illogical to believe that Hashem has a hand. And therefore, the Torah would never, even if it said, the Torah would never demand from you to believe in such a thing. And perhaps it's the message of today. Well, today is that the Rabbi Dana is saying, you might think that certain things, they sound illogical. If they're illogical, the Torah does not want you to believe in them. The Torah does not want you to follow them. If they go against nature, that's not a problem. So we believe in things that go against nature. But things that go against our pure, true logic, those are a problem. Bezat Hashem, Hashem will save us from such beliefs, from such people, from such emunot. And God willing, bring us to a path of goodness, of righteousness, of correctness. And God willing... Yes? Didn't it, wasn't it, it said that saw the neck... The back, the back of Hashem? Yeah. Moshe Rabbeinu. 
Oh, oh. Wait, what did Yitzchak say? Do I remember? No, mm-hmm. Moshe Rabbeinu. Oh, Moshe Rabbeinu Moshe saw Rabbeinu. the bat, the knot of tefillin. So that's not... Actually, it doesn't say that. It says Moshe Rabbeinu is having a conversation with God, and God tells him, V'ra'ita et achorai, and you will see my back presence, upanai lo yirah, but my Someone's face will never see. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean not face or back. It means back as in you'll see, you'll see the image of me, but like, like if somebody was standing backwards, you could identify who it is, but you don't actually see their, them. So through, through that, you'll be able to identify me, but you're never going to see me face to face as far as like when somebody comes right in front of you, you immediately see your face and you know this is But them. the rabbis do tell us that Moshe Rabbeinu saw the knot of tefillin in the back of Hashem's head. Like saying in the Zimbabwe, Kesher tefillin, Herale anav, Tumunat Adonai, but I guess it's true. It's not an actual part of Hashem. It's, a, it's an image that would remind us of what is Hashem. The only one who saw Hashem face, spoke to Hashem face to face, is Moshe Rabbeinu. But we'd have to understand, so what does that mean face to face? And the books of the philosophers that broke their pens explaining what these mean are beyond me. But just suffice to say that it was not a physical experience. It was a very deep internal experience that a person felt. Even the Rambam would go so far as to suggest that when the Torah says that you saw an angel, he didn't actually see an angel, but he, he dreamed an angel. It was, an angel is a dream. It's a vision that he saw. Because he goes so far to remove any kind of physical attention. Next week, God willing, we're going to tackle the question of, so if Hashem has no, if we're not allowed to have any uh, physical beings, so then how do we have two angels inside of the ark, on top of the ark, the two angels that were made over there, and they were looked like baby faces and had wings, that seems like Abu Dazara. Rida Adavi is going to tackle that as well as the Donis Haka Barbanel and the Meshach Uchman. We're going to, God willing, do all of that next.